they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them men of Galilee they said why are you standing here looking in the sky the same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's journey walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They all joined together in constant prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is your word. Now is your time. We are your people. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Father God. Speak to us, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 We are just a week from Pentecost. For those that don't know, Pentecost is really the birthday of the church. Pentecost is the marking of when uh, 120 of Jesus' followers gather in a room together. And while they're worshiping and praying and giving God glory, the Holy Spirit falls. It falls in such a way that the people who are standing around start to hear the word of God in their own language. It's from Pentecost that people begin to go to every corner of the earth to talk about the mighty things that they saw in Jerusalem and to carry the message of a risen Savior. But leading up to that, Jesus has now spent 40 days teaching, talking, and fellowshipping with his disciples. In that time, he reminds them that they should be preparing themselves to receive the Holy Spirit. In that time, he tells them that they should wait until what God promised them had arrived. Yes, I don't know if this morning counts as a Mother's Day sermon, um, but I wanted to take an opportunity to give you a lesson from my grandmother. Again, Pentecost represents the welcoming of the Holy Spirit, both into their hearts, but also into the upper room. Right. As you know, I believe that every time we come to these observances, that it's an opportunity to see them as more than an observance. In other words, next week during Pentecost, we have just as much opportunity as any other time, even on the day of Pentecost, to welcome the Holy Spirit into our hearts, to welcome the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives, to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit into our homes. And there's a, a lesson that I wanted to share from my grandmother uh, that perfectly, uh, I think, prepares us for next week. Uh, my grandmother, my mother's mom, uh, who we affectionately call Mama, uh, 
uh, was, uh, an, she was many things and an amazing woman, but professionally she was uh, a housekeeper. Uh, amen. Somebody got it. Uh, she was a housekeeper and because she was a housekeeper, she was an expert in preparing places to receive guests. Somebody else got it. Yeah, my grandmother, she, because of her profession, she was an expert in preparing us on how to receive guests into our home. As I said, Pentecost, Jesus was preparing the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit into their homes. I hope that we don't just take Pentecost as a celebration, but that we see it as an opportunity to prepare our hearts and our homes and our lives to receive the Holy Spirit. Mama, my grandmother, who while she was many things, uh, she was also a housekeeper. And because of her profession, she was an expert in preparing places to receive guest and so this morning I wanted to share how to get our houses in order my grandmother usually kept a really clean house amen I'm glad somebody knows what I'm talking about it was so hard y'all because I was so confused about how do I stay on track to prepare us uh, for Pentecost but it was Mother's Day and I wanted to make sure that I had a message that was uh, a fit for Mother's Day because I didn't want the mothers to walk out and feel like they were not celebrating say pastor you didn't even give a word for us. I just don't understand why you would have us come to church on Mother's Day. We even pushed our brunch back for you just in hopes and then you didn't even preach to us. You didn't even tell us anything and so my grandmother reached out to me and she said, here, tell them this, my grandson. She said, Kirkpatrick, as she would always call me, tell them this. Uh, if you want to make sure that you have a message but you have to stay on track, let me help you out, boy. Um, my grandmother was a domestic professionally while she was many other things uh, and because of her profession she was an expert in preparing places to receive guests now my grandmother always kept a really clean nice house but there was a process that she used uh, to make sure that that house was clean and ready and prepared to receive guests what she would do was first clear out everything I mean she would take the sheets and 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 the floor mat she would roll up the rug it Anything that could be lifted up that wasn't bolted down and even some of that stuff she would take up and move it out of the way maybe my grandmother knew some of your grandmothers uh, but 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 before she started cleaning anything before she started working with anything she would just start removing all of the stuff that could be moved I mean she would move the furniture she would move the bed she would move the chairs. she took uh, all the towels all even the pretty towels that were just for decoration that nobody could use even the places that nobody could go to. She would take all the stuff out of the refrigerator and, and out of the cabinet. She would move all of that stuff out of the way so that she could make sure that nothing stood in the way of her cleaning. Then after she started moving everything, she would begin to clean all the really tough spaces. I mean, the places that were hard to get into, the places uh, that were dark, the places that if nobody was paying attention, nobody would even know that you clean. You know how some of us clean. We clean just the stuff that folks can see. We clean just the stuff that if somebody was looking, they, it might cross their eye. There, some of us clean. You know, we only halfway clean. We don't clean the areas that we think nobody's paying attention to. Hello, somebody. We don't take care of the areas that we believe we can kind of shove and hide and if we just lock this door and tell no cell folks, don't go in there, that we don't have to worry about them seeing the mess that we left. Just as long as the stuff that folks can see is clean but no not my grandmother again because of her profession she understood that if you were going to prepare a place for somebody to come that things had to be spotless clean I mean not just where people can see but even the places where people could not see had to be clean and so she began to clean uh, she would she would take uh, the, 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 the comet and she would put that in the bathtub and she would just let that sit for a little while like as if she was seasoning chicken I don't know what it was I don't know why it worked but, but she would take the common and she would shake that and then uh, she uh, uh, she would she would let that sit for a while just put a little bit of hot water in there and then she would go into the sink and she would pour a little bit of bleach about a cap full of bleach into the sink and put some hot water in there and let that sit a little bit sounds like y'all grandma 
grandmother knew my grandmother uh, uh, and, 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 and then uh, she would uh, she, she, I don't even know if they make these anymore but she had these things called Brillo pads if you, do they still make Brillo pads uh, she would take the, the Brillo pad and, 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 and the Brillo pad she would put it like in the cracks and just and I, I really didn't understand it because I'm looking at it. It looks clean. It looks like everything is all right. But she must have had a special eye because she would. Just... <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> Top to bottom. Ceiling to the floor, window to the wall. Then after she cleaned the tough stuff, she would go back to the bathtub and uh, cause I guess the timer said that the comet had done what it was supposed to do and she would... Go to the sink. Uh, and after the tough stuff, see, uh, what, what, I, what I began to understand is that uh, when you clean the hard stuff first, uh, what you're able to do is to clean backwards. See, when you start cleaning the hard stuff first, then as you work your way down, all you're doing is cleaning up the residue from the stuff that you did. And see, see, some of us, we like to deal and just clean the easy stuff, uh, not realizing that if you only clean the easy stuff. Uh, the other place, you know, uh, she used to get on you where you, 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 you don't take a shower and... Uh, uh, you just spray some smell good on, not realizing uh, that that was just covering up the phone. It was that same approach to cleaning that if you just took care of the stuff that people could see, if you just did a basic cleaning, that the funk of the stuff that was deep down would still rise up, that no matter how good it might have looked, you could still smell the grease from the bacon and the fish that if you did not get that. So she cleaned the tough stuff first. Uh, uh, and then after all the tough stuff had been cleaned, after uh, all the, 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 the sinks and the bathtubs, uh, then she would start dusting. Right? The dust. And when she started dusting, she started dusting from the top to the bottom because that didn't make no sense if you dust all the stuff down again where you could see everything then when you start dusting up at the top then that dust just gets down and you end up working backwards has anybody been working backwards in your life you've just again been real dealing with the stuff at eye level and so you can't figure out how is it if I'm cleaning the stuff that I level this morning I want to encourage you to reach up into the places that you have not looked at reach up at the fan blades and up above the stove top reach up in those places uh, so, 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 so that the dirt that's up there, when you clean that off, you don't have to come back down to the eyesight level and have to... Am I talking to somebody? That I'm just talking. Like I said, my grandmother, she was many things, but she was a domestic. And because of her profession, she was an expert in preparing places to receive people. The other thing she, I never saw her do was a vacuum before she dusted Then, uh, but, 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 but after she dusted, she didn't immediately go vacuum. Uh, she had this little powder stuff that she would take, uh, and she would take the powder and she would just walk around and shake. Y'all know what I'm, am I, my mama said, am I making this up? I take the little powder stuff and she would put it, and then just like the comet, she would leave it there and go do some other stuff. And I, it took me a while to understand what exactly she was doing, but there, there's some stuff in the places, there's some stuff about the places where we walk that we can't just go pick up, but that we need to put some seasoning over the places where our feet tried to make. Yes, sir. I'm talking about my grandmother. I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> So she sprinkled the stuff and then she'll go do 
something else. You really don't know what the stuff that she sprinkles. Sometimes uh, we need to put some things in place in our lives that we can't see the immediate result. But I promise that if we put prayer in our lives, we might not see the results immediately. But if we just let that prayer sit a while in the end, I know that there's a benefit, that, that there, 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 there's some testimonies and some, some reading of the word that we need to do that just sprinkle it down in the places where we have to walk in. While I might not see the blessing immediately, I promise you, based on what my grandmother did, that there is a result in the end. So just stay with me. So after, uh, after she sprayed the stuff, she go do a few other things. Uh, then she might take a break. <laughs> just, you know, might run an errand to the store. Uh, Y'all know Pine Saw? Do they still? Like Pine Saw. Now, now, now by this time, the house smells uh, like bleach, Pine Saw, and Comet. Uh, but you know what I don't smell? Grease. You know what I don't smell? Uh, uh, also, what, what's going on simultaneously as the house is getting clean. Remember all of that stuff that she had packed up, the sheets and the top? Uh, those are now also being washed. So sometimes when she left there, we didn't have, we weren't super fancy at first. So we didn't have a, 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 a washing machine like some of y'all have in the house. And so she had to go uh, 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 to the laundry room in the apartment. And so that, uh, sometimes when she left, she would go and check on the things that she had put in the cleaner. Some of us have some stuff in our lives that we have been working on cleaning up and so sometimes we need to take a break and go check on our stuff that's being clean. Uh, uh, some things uh, God is working on because we've given it to him and we put it in his hands and so just like my grandmother had put that laundry in his hand in her in, 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 the, in, 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 in the, the, the washing machine she didn't have to wash it with her own hand. There's some stuff that like she put in the washing machine that we just need to put in God's hands and not, not, not worry about it and not fuss over it, but God, I put my child situation in your hands. God, I put my health situation in your hands. God, I put my finances in your hands, but every now and then I'm going to take a break from my cleaning and I'm going to go and check and see, God, do you need me to do anything else? Do I need to put another quarter in so that it can run a little bit longer? Do I need to take it out of the wash and put it into the dryer so that it can be ready? Right my grandmother, she was a domestic. Uh, she was many things, but professionally she was a domestic. And so uh, she was an expert on preparing mm -hmm. places to receive people. Yeah. And so when she would come back from uh, the laundry room or wherever she would go, uh, then she would start vacuuming. And as she was vacuuming, I could, another smell entered the room. Uh, it was like sunflower vanilla or something like that. I, I don't know if I'm remembering that part right, but it was something in vanilla, you know. They, but the more that she vacuumed, the louder the smell got. And there was something about when she vacuumed, I don't even know if this happens anymore, uh, but that there were lines on the carpet. That if you didn't see those lines, then you had not vacuumed that area properly. Is this anybody? I there are some places in our lives where uh, uh, we should be able to see the lines of change that delineate that the things that were there are no longer there. And now because we have allowed God to season our situation, because we have allowed the word and our prayer and our relationship and our fellowship and our praise and our worship, we allowed it to seep down into our hearts and seep down into our minds and seep down into our experience that when we start to suck up the dirt that we can see evidence Man. of cleanliness I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have a Mother's Day sermon I told you I was just trying to get us I wanted to make sure we were prepared to receive the Holy Spirit uh, but I, and I, anyway uh, so uh, Now the house smells good. 
Uh, the bath, the, the, the tub is spotless. Uh, the sink is spotless. All the, the dishes are clean. Uh, but the toilet, there was something. The toilet, uh, it still had Comet in it. Because the toilet, the toilet was where the really bad stuff went. And so, so, so while, while the comet that was in the tub was gone and the, and, and the comet that was in the sink was gone and, and the bleed, while in all the other areas, I, the, the toilet still had, it was still sitting. Let me get back to that. And so after the vacuuming, when all that was done, uh, I don't know if she had a timer or she didn't have like a big electronic watch, but somehow uh, by the time the stuff in the house was finished, God's timing, uh, by the stuff, the, the, by the time the stuff in the house was finished, the, the stuff that was in the dryer was, that, that she had taken to the wash was also ready. And so uh, everything lined up in perfect timing, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose uh, uh, yes. what is an hour to God uh, uh, is a somehow my grandmother's timing was so perfect because the stuff that was in the laundry room was ready at the right time at the exact time that uh, stuff was ready to be put back in uh, in the house and so she would bring that stuff and she would put the towels that you could use up and then the towels that you wasn't supposed to use up. Uh, she would put the, I don't, I, I know folks still have this, but the, the, the doormat and all of that stuff, she would put that out and uh, uh, everything seemed to, she would put the, the couch that she had moved back in place. All the chairs that she had put on top of the table, she took that down. Uh, all the stuff that she had moved to make sure that she dusted under it. Uh, she was able to put the lamp and all of that stuff back. Uh, and then, uh, after that, she would go and flush the toilet. Uh, now, I remember her scrubbing it, which was why I couldn't understand why after she scrubbed it, she still let the comment. Because I figure if you scrubbed it, all the stuff must have been gone. But it was just something about this method that when she flushed the toilet, it was more sparkly than the, than the sink. It was more sparkly. I, I don't know what it was, but the place that was the dirtiest uh, seemed to be cleaner than all the places. The place where all the mess was seemed to be cleaner than all the places. The place where all the filth was seemed to be better than the place where all, all the... You know what I'm talking about. Seem to be just as clean, if not cleaner. Some of us need some comet in our toilet bowl. So then everything was in place. Everything was clean. Uh, then uh, she would spray air freshener all throughout the house and it was just a sweet aroma uh it was it was uh potpourri that's what it was y'all remember the potpourri air freshener it was like a, a maroon can it looked like a whole bunch of y'all okay amen amen But she didn't spray that until everything else was in place. So now the house was ready to receive the guest that we were preparing for. 
And so I assume Jesus and his disciples must have known my grandmother. Uh, because uh, what we've experienced over the last 40 days, uh, when Jesus got up, that was when he dealt with all of our mess. Uh, those three days in that he was in the grave that was the comet sitting in all of our dirty places and uh, uh, collecting up all of the stuff that could not uh, uh, be taken care of through prayers and sacrifices uh, 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 the three days in the grave was the, the time that he was let, uh, uh, allowing his spirit to maturate over the places and situations in our life that needed to be deep cleaned the stuff that could not get out with just some nice fluffy prayer or, or some pretty song and all of the stuff that wouldn't go be dealt with just by sitting here at the altar for a couple of minutes on Sunday. The stuff that wasn't going to be dealt with by just saying, oh Lord, help me. But there was some stuff that needed to be conquered, that needed to be eradicated. There was some in our life that Jesus needed to go deep down and deal with and, and, and get rid of so that the deep dark places in our life where our mess is would be just as shiny. See, Jesus uh, uh, cleaned stuff out from the top to the bottom, from the ceiling to the floor, from the, uh, 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 from the window to the wall. Jesus moved and picked up everything in my life and shuffled it around. Jesus made sure that he, he did everything in a proper order so that the stuff that had been cleaned didn't get dirty again. He, 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 he cleaned all of our sin. He dealt with our hard stuff. He dusted us off. Uh, and then he begins to put things back in place. Uh, he spends the next 40 days restoring Peter, restoring Thomas, restoring Mary. He spends the next 40 days putting things back in place, making sure that the lamp was where it's supposed to be, making sure that the couch was right back in its own space, making sure that everything was in perfect place to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus made sure that before he left, uh, uh, and then he went to go check on the laundry. Hallelujah. Uh, see, he, he, he went up into heaven and they were standing there now what I failed to tell you was that when my grandmother went to go check on the laundry that she gave me some work to do uh, she gave me some responsibility and Jesus in the same way giving us work to do this morning giving us some responsibility and some preparation and so where we find ourselves in the text this morning is that now while Jesus is gone to check on the towels the disciples have some work that they have to do. They have to make sure that everything is in place. And so if you remember, one of the big things that happened was that Judas betrayed Jesus, had killed himself. And so they had to, they couldn't go, uh, they couldn't receive the Holy Spirit incomplete. And so they had to find somebody that could replace him. And so they, uh, they, they didn't just go and find anybody they started to pray and ask the Lord for proper person to place properly so that they could be in place to receive the Holy Spirit uh, I... is this making sense so after everything is in place after the towels are on their rack the scripture says the disciples began to spray the air freshener of prayer it says they began to gather and fellowship and worship together it says that they began to make the air smell sweet because everything had been made clean Everything had been made new. Everything had been made ready. And so maybe this morning, you should meet my grandmother. But it sounds like maybe my grandmother wasn't the only one who knew how to make things ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Maybe this morning, uh,
it's time to get your house in order. Maybe we've just been doing some base cleaning. Now, I, I, my grandmother wouldn't allow nobody to come if the house was just clean. If she knew somebody was coming, if she was preparing for guests, uh, it had to be cleaned the right way. And maybe this morning there's somebody that's just been cleaning the surfaces. That ain't poured no comet. Or maybe you poured the comet and just let it, wiped it up as soon. <laughs> Maybe you were cleaning the stuff that you could see, but not reaching into the dark areas that nobody could see. This morning, I want to encourage you. It's time to get our house in order. Yes, sir. Not because we're receiving just anybody, mm. <laughs> but because the Lord is preparing to send you power. Yes, sir. Because in one week from now, we should be preparing ourselves to receive the guest and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I don't want you welcoming the Holy Spirit into a space that ain't really been cleaned. See, the reason this was important is because the disciples could not receive the Holy Spirit without having dealt with the dirt of their pain and their past. The reason that this was important is because the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit was to prepare them to move forward in their purpose. And you cannot do that if you are. You know how hard it is to welcome somebody if you still worry. Uh, you walk by a place and you smell something. So now more, more than you can focus on your guests, you trying to figure out how to hide the smell some more. And so you start moving around funny, moving around weird. You know how hard it is to welcome guests when you know you got a room full of stuff that you ain't cleaned out and cleared out out and every time somebody walked by that door you get nervous and th th this is why it is important that we prepare ourselves properly that we get our house in order so that when the Holy Spirit comes any door can be open and we know that it's clean uh, that any 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 carpet can be lifted when we know that we've given that dirt to God that every area in our lives not that we live perfect not that we didn't make any wrong but that we allowed the Lord to clear it up clean it up and cancel it out not that we got it right all the time but we allowed the Lord to come in and do a deep clean in our heart a deep clean in our mind a deep clean in our body not not because we always did it right but because the funky stinky messed up dirty places in our lives we allowed the Lord to season it well to pick it all up to clean it out And so this morning, I want to invite you to allow Jesus to put your house in order. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Allow him to come into every crack and crevice of our lives. Mm -hmm. Clean it out. Mm -hmm. Clear it out. Fill the places in your life with the, with the aroma of prayer, of praise, and of worship. So that we can be prepared to receive the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take inventory. Yes. Clean up. Mm. Clear out. Yes. Get ready. Let go of the people that are gone so that you can put the right people in place. So that when the Holy Spirit comes, when your power comes, when your purpose comes, that you can be prepared, Amen. present, and ready to do what God has called us to do. It's time to get our house in order. Give God praise as we stand on our feet.
while my grandmother was an amazing cleaner, there's one that cleans better even than her. Good job. And that's Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. And so this morning, I want to extend to you the opportunity to be in relationship with Jesus. Allow him to come into your heart, cleanse and transform your life so that you can be prepared to receive the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your own life. And so if you're worshiping with us this morning and you're here in the sanctuary, you're worshiping online, I want to extend the invitation to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come and give me your hand, but give God your heart. Let's together say the prayer of salvation. And in that moment, you are made clean. Or maybe you're worshiping with us this morning and you don't know, G you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you've been looking for a church home. I want to invite you to come and join us here at Parks Chapel where we love to clean house. Hallelujah. Amen. and join us here in family and fellowship is there another that would come this morning come to give your life to the Lord or come to join us here in fellowship hallelujah amen amen praise the Lord yeah, yeah. Let's give God praise. All right, we it's a lot of names this morning, so I'm gonna let them give us your name. Mark Tanita, Carlisle Solomon. Amen. Honor Lynn Chanel Duncantel. Amen. Oh. <laughs> we got her. Don't worry. Let's give God praise. Uh, they have both come. They know Jesus uh, as their Lord and Savior, but they have both come to join us here in membership. Amen. Amen. And so we give God praise. We are excited. Uh, it's my duty to let you know we're going to put you to work, so get ready. But let's praise the Lord for new Amen. members of the family. This is Sister Dana. She's going to take you and get some information from you. And uh, we're just so excited about what God is going to do with you here. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand, praise. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, reminder, please. Uh, if you've signed up for pictures or if you'd like a picture, uh, see Sister Imani down in the fellowship hall uh, for our picture day. Uh, we give God praise for his goodness. Uh, to all of our mothers, happy Mother's yeah. Day. Thank uh, you. We have cards prepared just as a small show and token of our love and affection. So please uh, grab your card on the way out. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of a mighty good God rest, rule, and abide in your life now and forever. And those that believe said, Amen.